I'm gagged that I'm still here, y'all. Um, you too. know. I have a fun experiment to do today. Well, it's not really an experiment, it's more of something that people have been doing on booktube for years. But I want to try a chapter of a bunch of different romance books and then pick one and read it and see if I picked right. So my sister Maisie helped me come up with five books from her bookshelf and we're gonna try them out and see which one I like the best from the first chapter. So I'm gonna do these in alphabetical order so there's no bias but the first one here is Dating Dr. Dill by Nisha Sharma. From what I can gather in the blurb, this is kind of going to end up being a bit of a marriage of convenience sort of book where the protagonist is trying to get engaged in order to inherit her mother's house. Next up we have The Fine Print by Lauren Asher. Maisie keeps telling me that this is like, like a Walt Disney sort of weird thing and being the Disney adult that I apparently am, this is one she picked for me. From what I can gather from the verb of this one, it's gonna be a bit of a workplace romance. That's what it kind of seems like with a, a rich male counterpart. The next one is It Happened One Summer by Tessa Bailey. This I've heard is a little bit Schitt's Creek-like. This seems to be like a grumpy sunshine kind of vibe. You've got the uh, the cheerful Piper who's just being cut off from her family's fortune and the male Brendan, Brendan? Yeah, Brendan, who is the sea captain in this small little town that she has ended up in. Next up, we got The Love Hypothesis by Ali Hazelwood. I, I know about this one and it even says it there, the TikTok sensation. This is reportedly originally a Kylie Ren and Rey Star Wars fanfiction that has been evolved into a STEM romance between a grumpy professor and a new PhD student but also is a bit of a fake relationship -y sort of thing according to the blurb as well so lots going on. And the final book I'm gonna try this time is One to Watch by Kate Stamen London. This is the one I know the least about but looking at the blurb it's about a plus size fashion blogger who gets the chance of a lifetime to be on a TV dating show. Out of these five, I really have no idea which one is gonna be the one I end up reading the whole of right now, but we're gonna kick it off and we're just gonna go in alphabetical order. So I'm going to read Dating Dr. Dill's first chapter first. And actually I've already done that, so I will head over to Pars Meg. Thanks future Meg. As you can see, I do not look that good right now. But regardless, I am here to read a chapter of Dating Dr. Deal by Nisha Sharma. I have about 45 minutes until I have to drop off for a meeting. It's like my one meeting on my day off. I can get that done, right? Five minutes later. So one chapter in to Dating Dr. Dill and we have established our main character, Karina, um, her entire family dynamic. She lives with her dad and her grandmother in the house that her dead mum like built from scratch. It was like her dream home. And her father wishes to retire and sell it. Also in amongst this, her sister is getting married pretty soon. It's set up that there is a, a fund of sorts waiting once both sisters are engaged that can either be used for a house or for a wedding. So when Karina finds out that her father is trying to sell the house, she panics, asks for the money, and he says, no, it's for when you're engaged. This all also happens on Karina's 30th birthday, and uh, due to the traditions of her family and her community, it's seen as if her 30th birthday is kind of like the turning point in her fertility and her ability to get married and start a family. So all of this together, ends up being a big disaster of a birthday. But I'm liking it so far. I feel like I'm really aware of every member of the family. I feel like everybody's been pretty fleshed out. You can kind of get the characters already. So yeah, we'll see which one I pick, but I think this is definitely a contestant. I just finished recording the intro for this, so I'm, I'm recycling the same camera angle, forgive me, but I'm about to crack into the fine print. So that's gonna be super exciting. Chapter one of this one is a lot shorter than chapter one of Dating Dr. Dill, which was about 15, 16, pages this is about nine or ten so we'll see if i'm feeling involved in the same way so we are done with the first chapter of the fine print and it was actually told from the perspective of the male protagonist rowan 
I can't say I love the writing. It feels a little bit... I don't know. The, the main character seems really stuck up, and I don't know if I can empathise at all with him in any way, shape, or form. Mainly because he's a billionaire. Like, why was I expecting to? But the premise does seem interesting, and as a Disney fan, I feel like I maybe am more inclined to like it, simply because the, the premise is in order to obtain his share of the company after his grandfather's passing, he has to become the director of this theme park and find a an issue or a, a gap in its market and develop a whole new project with it and then in six months time like the board of directors votes if he's done that and then he gets his share of the company if he succeeds i don't know how that's going to become a, a romance but i really like the the premise of his progression story so yeah another relatively successful chapter on to the next one shout out to my neighbor who is rocking the old school paramore in the background hope it's not loud enough to get demonetized but here we go not that i why do i say demonetized they don't even get money i'm in copyright strikes i am in this tiny crevice that is in my dining room and we are gonna make that into a reading nook at some point soon i just bought a chair for those that don't know my fiance works in a secondhand furniture store so we've been vetting chairs for quite some time and we found one that we kind of like it's mainly just for me and my sister it's not for me for him so he's just had to send a bunch of like pictures my way but we found one and i think it's gonna fit perfectly in this little tiny gap that technically is uh my business station all these books here are gonna be on hold that's why they're just there for now yeah this is gonna be a lot neater once it's done but yeah i'm very excited anyway i am about to kick it off with it happened one summer hopefully that is as fun as the last year have been so chapter one of it happened one summer is down and yes this reads Shit's Creek. If you've watched Shit's Creek, this is Alexis. In my mind is already that picture. That might be a disservice to the character of Piper in the end. I don't really know. We'll just have to see. But I really enjoyed the voice of Piper. Uh, that's written really well. It stays true to the intentions. I think this is going to be a hard decision to make. I just realised I didn't film a clip before I read The Love Hypothesis, but here we are. I have finished reading the prologue of this one. It was a prologue and not the first chapter. It's about the same length, but this is kind of establishes a history between our protagonist Olive and the guy, as he is referred to. I'm assuming it's gonna be the love interest. But I actually feel like this one isn't in the running for the one I'm gonna pick. I don't think it's necessarily bad, everything seems fine with it, but this is definitely the first one where I've thought there's definitely another book I'd rather read in this set. So I think this one's out of the running, but we will but we will definitely consider it in our considerations. Last but hopefully not least, we've got one to watch. Let's hope that this is as good as the rest of them. Okay, that really didn't take long. That was like four, five minutes tops. The first chapter of this is actually a prologue. It is set slightly in the past, I believe, and kind of sets up the protagonist B's career of being a blogger, really. Mainly it just talked about her being overweight, which wasn't my favorite. As you can tell from the chins, I'm also overweight. I've yet to find a book that deals with weight, like in terms of romance, um, without it being really cack handed or really overdone to the point where it almost comes across as a little bit offensive, to be quite honest. Maybe that's the problem with my perception of my own body and like body dysmorphia or whatever, but that's just how I feel. I also didn't really get much of a sense of humour with this in the same way that I did with... Specifically, it happened one summer, but also I found it evident in dating Dr. Jill as well. So I suppose we've got a bit of a decision to make. Some of you might not particularly care um, about this particular bit, but I just submitted my proposal for my final year dissertation for my degree, which is big and scary and it's done. And I'm very happy about that. Literally just dissertation left. I'm going to be working on what will become the website that hosts my store for my small business. But due to like copyright laws around the ownership of things I do in my own time and for outside parties. Um, I'm using an alias in order to protect my intellectual property from my corporate job. Joy of joys. Okay, let's wrap up. Dame Dr. Dill had some humor. I really liked the protagonist and 
and the stakes were pretty well set up in the first chapter so this is definitely a contender. The fine print, I feel like I'm gonna be more interested in Rowan's story than I am in the relationship story um, simply because I'm a Disney adult but not out of the running yet I don't think. It happened one summer, really loved the voice, no stakes set up yet but enough uh, personality for me to trust that I could see it through. So this is still a contender. The Love Hypothesis, I wasn't sold in the uh, first part, so I think I'm gonna skip out on this one this time. Doesn't mean it's bad by any means, but it's just not what I immediately want to pick. Want to Watch, didn't love the narrative style and wasn't really set up for anything yet. So again, I don't think I'm picking this one up. Okay, we're down to three and I feel like I'm gonna knock this one out as much as I wanna know what happens. I'm gonna knock this one out because I really wasn't too keen on the writing. Like the plot, yeah, but the writing there. So we're down to two and honestly I really want to read both. This one is giving me Yinka Where Is Your Husband vibes, which I actually really enjoyed that book so I would definitely be intrigued to, to see if it compares. And then it happened one summer. I mean, I've already established what the vibes are in this. So yeah, you know I wanna see it. I'm really struggling with this, guys. I have a feeling I'd like both of them, which is making this really hard. I was kind of expecting to find like a single diamond in the rough out of these guys, but like both of these really feel like they're up my street. And Molly has definitely read this one already. Molly loves this one. And when it comes to romance, I feel like Molly and I have similar taste. We're gonna go with Dating Dr. Dill for the simple reason I think this one is a little less well known. Like maybe it isn't, maybe this is just where I've seen things, but I thought I might as well give it the spotlight. I think I've also realized that I really enjoy the the trope of societal expectation playing as part of the stakes in a romance. I don't know why, what does that say about me? I don't know, but I'm gonna get cracking on this. And to be honest, I'm probably not gonna film another clip until the chair is here for the nook. So you'll see me in that chair in a minute. I'm sitting in the book now. It's happened. I've got a little nook for reading. I've got chair, got blanket, got my reading journal up there. Got my little book nook sign that I made. Oh, it feels really cute and cozy. I love it. I'm like 60 pages into this now. I didn't get as far as I was hoping to, mainly because of this. And, um, you know, just existing as part of a household with my sister and my boyfriend, you know, having conversations and all that jazz. I'll just be reading all the time, but I have an hour before we're gonna sit and watch The Last of Us. That show's really good, although it makes me cry like a bitch, so that's fun. But yeah, I'm gonna try and get a bit more done. Hopefully I'm a little closer to finishing it. No, I was literally about to sit on there, sir. Can we, can we share? Something we can do? Will you allow me to share for us to sit here? Hello, are you gonna sit here while I do my little clip? That's really cute. All right, let's talk about this book. Have a nice strong coffee with me, featuring some toffee nut whipped cream because I'm bougie like that and I know how to make this shit at home because, you know, I hyperfixate because I possibly have ADHD. Anyway, dating Dr. Dill. Where we left off, we were like a chapter in, the stakes had already been set, our main character Karina needed to get engaged in order to be able to inherit her mother's house. Fantastic, I like where this is going. She's from a culture where arranged marriages are kind of commonplace and she wants to have a love marriage. So has defied um, her family's kind of expectations to set one up for her. Also her parents had a love marriage and that plays a big factor in why she wants a love marriage in the first place. Then flash to the male interest Prem. I don't like Prem, I'm gonna be honest. His parents also had a love marriage, but wasn't a particularly love for one whilst he was growing up. That's sometimes how love marriages go. Funnily enough, you have to try regardless of whether you love someone or not. And so he prom he went for an arranged marriage to a woman. However, she died of cancer. So he's now in this place of grieving. He didn't want to go out there and meet anyone until he met Karina and sparks flew, you know, great stuff. And his mother at this point had been prompting him to get out on the market and was going to set him up and also inevitably said that if she did, if he doesn't get married she won't support his uh, business, he wants to create a clinic um, in his local area because he's a doctor. So the stakes are there for both of them. Then they meet, sparks fly, but she gets stranded in his friend's office 
because his mum has texted some SOS signal and he just leaves, just as they were about to do the business. And this all happens on Karina's 30th birthday. So she's bitter the next day, but she's also promised her sister, who is a YouTuber appearing on some public access show about love, that she will accompany her to this, um, this taping of this show. Who presents this show? Prem, Dr. Dill. And his whole show leans toward this idea that love is harmful. Love can hurt your body. And so he gets people on who've had like love marriages and this sort of thing, like her sister's engaged right now, um, adds to the pressure, you know, because it's a younger sister, and tries to completely throw off this argument for love, you know, um, tries to convince the sister that the, the love is harming her well-being, she doesn't sleep as much or something like that. Waiting in the wings for the next dad break, however, is Karina to have a scathing argument about how misled she had been by this man. This clip goes viral. All of his uh, investors in this new health centre that he wants to build back out. And the only way for him to get back in the good books of people and his mother are to partake in a fake relationship or to be seen to be in a relationship I should say because I mean if it was real then that would also work. So Karina and Prem start fake dating and fake dating do what fake dating does and this book is born really. I haven't really given away too much there it feels like there was quite a lot there but this is actually just the beginnings and the stakes and, and yes there is good stakes but the more important thing is that the romance felt so unreal. Like it felt like one minute they hated each other and the next minute they were really caring about each other. It wasn't like passion, it was like care, which is where I didn't get it. I understand that like the, the intersection between hate and like passion can kind of lead to certain things, but the hate and the care is where I wasn't seeing it. If I could compare this to another romance book I have read, I would probably compare it to Yinka Where Is Your Husband by Lizzie Damalola Blackburn. Uh, I read that last year and I thought that that was kind of delving into the same like societal expectations of being married, all this sort of stuff, but it was handled in a better way um, in that the romance wasn't really the end goal and we realised that the protagonist did actually have a lot of work to be done on themselves and it didn't really well I feel like in the end these characters did work on themselves in some way it felt like we didn't actually know what that entailed like there was no you just went from A to B without any real like narrative on it that said I feel like every single side character in this book was really fleshed out and really like explored I love the aunties who are um, close friends of Karina's late mother. I really love them as a set of people that really had Karina's best interests in mind. But the thing I went into it for, the romance didn't really hook me. So I'm kind of bummed about that. So I gave it I gave it a free star. Like it wasn't bad. I, I just finished it in a day. It wasn't like it was dragging, but I didn't feel like I felt with certain other books, like Inca Where Is Your Husband, like the Brown Sisters trilogy, like any of like the romance books that I've really loved. And I'm, I'm kind of sad about that. I was really hoping to find another one that I actually really love because it's normally about this time of year that I read a bunch. I might give It Happened One Summer a shot at some point soon. I normally have an audiobook on the go and I'm just coming up to the end of the one I'm listening to at the moment. So maybe I'll give It Happened One Summer a go in that format. But yeah, I, I wasn't sold on this one, unfortunately, but maybe it will be great for you guys. Maybe you're into it more for the side characters anyway. So I definitely wouldn't like rule this one out as a good option. But unfortunately, because my expectations of this one were so high, I feel like it let me down a little bit. Also worth noting, there is going to be a series where like some of the friends of these two characters end up together. Turns out these are like retellings of Shakespeare, which I didn't realise until it was mentioned in the end of this one. I'm fairly certain that this is a retelling of The Taming of the Shrew, and then the following one is like a retelling of Much Ado About Nothing, which is annoying because I haven't read the source material, so I don't know how close to that it is. Anyway, that was my attempt at finding a new romance fave using the try a chapter technique. Unfortunately, we didn't find a favourite, but I have hope that maybe next time I try one of these sort of videos, we will find something that I'm really into. If there's any genres or books you want me to include in the next one, leave it down in the comment below. And also, if you've read Dating Dr. Dill, I'd love to know what you think. All opinions are acknowledged and welcomed around here, so feel free to fight with me. I don't mind. But yeah, that's it for today, and hopefully, I will see you guys next time.